Section 8.5, graphing quadratic functions. Remember, quadratic functions is the same as what? Second degree polynomial functions. So that means the highest power of x has to be two for it to be called quadratic functions. So remember, we have seen quadratic equations in previous chapters. Here we will be dealing with quadratic functions. In other words, instead of this guy being equal to zero, now it's equal to f of x, which is the nickname for y. In other words, this guy sometimes appears as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So anytime you have a function whose highest degree of uh, independent variable like x is two, those are called quadratic functions. And we will be graphing these guys. That means we'll draw the picture of these guys using the axis of symmetry and something called vertex and the intercepts. Okay, <clears throat> so um, quadratic functions, they show up in two forms. The general form is standard form. So general form would be ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the leading coefficient, correct? The leading coefficient. That's the number attached to the what? X with the highest power. A cannot be zero because if it is zero, then it's linear function. And A, B, C are numbers. Sometimes uh, the same equation happens to be in this, uh, shows up in this form. A times X minus H squared plus K. And A and H and K is constant. In either scenario, the parabola the graph is called parabola and whether the parabola opens downwards or upwards. So this would be like an upward parabola and this would be like so-called downward parabola. Do you see it? How can I tell by inspection if the parabola is up or down? Depends on the sign of the leading coefficient in both forms. If A is positive, then uh, what? Let me just uh, make sure I make a correction here. If A is negative, the parabola opens downwards. If A is positive, the parabola opens upwards. So if A negative, parabola opens down. If A positive, the parabola opens up. A is the leading coefficient. For instance, in these problems, the leading coefficient in this problem is two, which is positive. So I know the parabola opens up. In this case, the leading coefficient, the number attached to the x squared is what? Negative three. So I know this parabola opens downwards. Here, the leading coefficient is not five, it's four. That's the number attached to the x squared is four. Four is positive. So I expect the parabola open up here. This is the leading coefficient right here in front of the parentheses. Leading coefficient is negative two, which is less than zero. So I expect the parabola open downwards. So <clears throat> let's do a graph. If the function appears in form one, that means general form ax squared plus bx plus c, the graph is called parabola, which is, you know, the U shape correct? If A is positive, the parabola opens up. If A is negative, the parabola opens down. A is the leading coefficient. The y-intercept is always this number C, which is 0 comma C is the y-intercept. This is where the graph hits the y-axis. So you can tell by inspection. However, we have a vertex. What is a vertex? Well, if you go back, vertex is the turning point of a parabola. What do I mean by turning point? Notice if the parabola opens downwards, notice as you uh, what, picture yourself walking on the what parabola going from left to right, you go up. And then at some point when you hit the vertex, which is also called what maximum point, that's like the highest point on the parabola. Then you go downwards. So notice the direction of the 
U-shape change, just like a cul-de-sac. You go way down to the dead end and then you make a U-turn. So the turning point of a what parabola is called vertex. Vertex can be the highest point or it could be the lowest point. If the parabola opens upwards, the vertex is called minimum point of the parabola. Okay, so opens downwards is maximum, opens upwards is what? Minimum. So the formula to find the vertex, remember vertex is an order pair, order pair of numbers, one for x, one for what? Y. X is always equal to minus B over 2A. So that means you take half of what this guy and divide it by 2, the coefficient of X. And the Y is 4AC minus B squared divided by 4A. Or you can get the Y, once you know what X is, up of the equation. I usually don't use this formula. I only use this. Once I get my hand on X component of the vertex, I just substitute in the function, get the y component. I don't use this. So let's do this. Suppose you were asked to graph y is equal to negative x squared minus plus 8x minus 12. To begin with, I know the graph is called parabola, so it's not a line. The leading coefficient is right over here, which is negative 1. It's less than 1, so I know the parabola opens downwards. The y-intercept by inspection is 0, comma negative 12. Remember, this is your c, so it's 0, negative 12. Now, when it comes to vertex, I know the x component is minus 2b minus b over 2a of, of this formula. So in this case, check this out. a is negative 1, b is 8, and c is negative 12. So the vertex is negative 8 over 2 times negative 1. So that's negative 8 over negative 2, which is 4. But remember, you can, at this point, you have an option of either using this formula to find the y component of the vertex, or you could just simply go to this equation, you know, the original function, this guy right here, and replace the x's with the x component of the vertex which is negative, what was it? 4 squared plus 8 times 4 minus 12. So work this out. You get negative 16 plus what? 32 minus 12, which is like 32 minus, what is that? 28. And that's like 4, I believe. So there it is. So the vertex is at 4 comma 4. Is that right? So there you have it. So now I'm ready to what? Graph this without plotting any points, correct? The idea is do not plot points. Just find the y-intercept, determine whether the parabola opens up or down, find the vertex, and then you are done. So where is the vertex? Is at 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's right over here. Okay, with well, a y-intercept is negative 12. So it's gonna be way down here. And I know the parabola opens downward. So it has to go through what? These two points. So I'm gonna go like this. Do you see it? Then there is this magic vertical line here, which goes through the what? Uh, vertex. Okay, this guy right here. And that's called axis of symmetry. Axis of what? Symmetry. What does that mean? That means that's like an apple, which is going to be cut in half. In other words, the shadow of this guy can be what? Found on the other side. In other words, the other side of the other half of the parabola is the mirror image of this guy. So <clears throat> how do I do this? Well, uh, let's see now. So um, uh, right here, notice the y-intercept is this much away from the axis of symmetry. So go the same amount to the opposite side. Make sure these guys match these distances. And now what? Complete the graph. So that would be like something like this.
Do you all see it? So make sure the graph looks like a what? A U shape, not a V shape, yes? It should not have no sharp turns. So this is called axis of symmetry. And this is called Y intercept. And these are called X intercepts. To find X intercepts, okay, I'm not gonna require you guys to find the X intercepts, but you could. All you have to do is what? Set Y equal to zero and then solve for x. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about set negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 equal to 0, right? And then solve for x. Um, you know, uh, I'm not sure if this guy factorable or not. First thing first, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative. I'm going to get this. So um, let's see if this guy is going to work. How about 6 and 2? About negative, negative. So how about x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 2? In other words, this guy is what? 2 comma 0. And this guy is what? 6 comma 0. So those are the x-intercept. And this is the y-intercept. And the vertex is at 4 comma 4. This is as complete graph as, or accurate, I should say, as it gets. You all see it. The next one is this guy. So A is equal to 2, B is equal to positive 6, C is equal to positive 5. So the graph, once again, is a parabola. And what? A is positive. So the parabola opens up. And the y-intercept by what? Inspection is at 0, 5. You know, the c is the y-intercept. And the vertex, the x component is negative b over 2a, which in this case is negative 6 over 2 times 2, which is negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 halves, correct? So now to find the y component, all you have to do is go back to the original function and replace the what? X's with negative what? Three halves and work this out, get an answer, correct? And then what you do, you are ready to graph, right? So I would leave it up to you guys to complete the graph so I can show you some more examples. So please complete the graph, yes? All right, next. Sometimes you have this form. If you have form number two, which is a times x minus h squared plus k, this is still a parabola. If a, the leading coefficient, which is a number in front of the parentheses, is positive, the parabola opens up, negative, down. However, in this form, you don't have to find the vertex. You can find the vertex by inspection. In other words, the vertex is always sitting at h comma k. But the problem with this form is this is not y-intercept anymore. To find y-intercept, I need to set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So K, so please make a note, K is not, is not the Y intercept. Do you see it? Yeah. So let's uh, take a look at the example and see what's going on here. This is form number two. So looks to me, A is two. Do you see it? But this is not C. So because A is 2, which is positive, so I'm expecting the parabola open up. Now, the vertex by inspection is at set x minus 1 inside the parentheses equal to 0. So x is 1 and y of the what? Uh, vertex is 5. So this number is the y component. But to find the x component, set this what's inside the parentheses equal to 0, solve for x. So it turns out in this particular case, the vertex is not at negative 1, 5. It's at 1, positive 1, 5. Okay? But remember, this is k, this is h. So 
to find the y-intercept, I have to what? Set x equal to zero. So this is not y-intercept anymore, not in this form. So as you can tell, each has advantage and disadvantage. The disadvantage in this form is what? You, this is not y-intercept, you have to find it. But the advantage is you don't have to use the formula for finding the vertex of the parabola. There it is, my inspection in this case is one comma five. So to find the y-intercept, I set what? X equal to zero. And I kind of work this out and I kind of get two times one plus five, which is seven. There it is. So I guess I'm ready what? To complete the graph. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. Where was the vertex? One comma five, one. One, two, three, four, five, right about here. Where was the y-intercept? Seven. So I'm going to go up to one, two, seven. Which way the parabola opens? Upwards. And it has to go through these two points and it has to turn what? At the vertex. Do you see it? Now draw the axis of symmetry, which is a line which goes through the what? Oh, the vertex. Okay, this guy was what? One unit away from, this point was one unit away from the axis of symmetry. Go that much to the other side. And now complete the graph. And here we go. Make sure this guy is a U shape, not a V shape, yes? In other words, don't make it look like this, right? That's a V-shape. This is a U-shape, which is called parabola. That's the name, parabola. Okay? So, <clears throat> for the next two, why don't I just set this up so you guys can do it on your own. So, notice the leading coefficient is negative 1. So, the parabola opens downwards. The vertex is at negative one, negative three. Did you see how I got negative one for x? I set this guy equal to zero. I solve for x, so it's not positive one. It's negative one, negative three. And the y-intercept is what? Set x equal to zero. You get y equals negative one, zero plus one squared minus three which is negative one times one minus three, which is negative four, okay? The last one, notice this is the same as x squared plus zero x plus five. So, so what? So, um, <clears throat> so I can also rewrite this this way, x minus zero squared plus five. I could do that, right? So, <clears throat> guess what? Um, the leading coefficient is 1 in either form. So, that means what? Uh, it's positive. So, the parabola opens up. The vertex is at 0, 5. Okay. But the y-intercept happens to be, if you set x equal to 0, is also 5. So the y-intercept overlaps with what? With y, uh, with vertex. Okay, so we got a problem here. You know, what's the vertex is here? Two, three, four, five, right? So that's the vertex. But guess what? Uh, it also is what? The y-intercept. So at this point, it will be nice if you select a point, a value for x on your own. Let's set x equal to 1. So go back to this equation. Replace the x with 1. And you get what? 6. So if x is 1, y is what? 6. There goes one more point. So now you are ready to complete the graph. There it is. And make sure the graph is like an apple, which is cut in half. In other words, this would be your axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. It's like this part is the mirror image of this, this part. Axis of symmetry means if this is a mirror, 
So the shadow of this, this part is on the other side. That's the image. That's the mirror image of this part. That's why this is called axis of symmetry. Finally, these kind of problems, they show up in what? Word problems, these kind of graphs, that is, when we're trying to find the what? Maximum number of, let's say, revenue, minimum cost, and so on and so forth. In other words, anytime you're dealing with the words maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, chances are this would be done by what? Uh, quadratic functions, correct? At least in this class. Here is the deal. Selling watches. The revenue, revenue means income. That's how much money the store gives. But gets by selling n many watches. So these are number of watches. And here is the revenue function, which happens to be quadratic function. Do you see it? <clears throat> right? So A is negative 0.1. B is what? 25. There is no C. So this is like plus zero. Find the number of watches that must be sold to obtain maximum. Maximum means largest possible, revenue possible. Maximum means the largest. Minimum means the lowest. And part B, what is the maximum revenue in terms of dollars? Remember, these are number of watches, right? This is like N. This is like maximum revenue, which is like, what is R? R is the revenue, yes? Okay, <clears throat> because A is what? Negative 0.1, which is less than zero. So that just means the parabola opens downwards. So the vertex, what? Is the maximum point. So what you have to do for problem, for this problem to answer part A and B, is find what the x and y component of the vertex. So in this case, in this problem, guess what uh, problem? X, it will be what? It will be same as n, which is number of watches sold, right? Sold. And guess what? In this problem, y of the vertex, it will be the same as what? Maximum revenue. Revenue. That means r what? Max. Do you see it? So what it boils down to is what? To find the x and y component of the vertex. It is maximum. If it opens downwards, it will be minimum if the parabola open upwards. But in either case, you still have to find the X and Y component of the what? Of the vertex. So in this problem, N is 25 divided by, so remember this is minus B over 2A. So that's minus 25 over two times negative 0.1 which happens to be 125 watches. So the person at the store has to pay, uh, sell this many watches to what? To maximize, to get the largest possible what? Revenue. Let's just make sure this is okay. So that would be like what? Oh, 25 divided by, what is that? 0.2, is that right? And that will be 125. Do you see it? So that's the maximum number of watches. But now to find the maximum revenue. So now I need what? Dollar amount. Okay. Where do I get that? From the equation right here. What was the revenue equal to? It was equal to 0.1 N squared plus 25 N. You already found N, all you have to do is find R of 125. That means replace the N with 125 and work this out. When you do, you get 1,562 bucks and what? 20 cents. So this is the maximum 
revenue. You know, revenue means income. This is how much money the store makes if he sells 125 watches. In other words, if he sells this many number of watches, he or she, the store owner, can what? Get the largest income as possible. So I hope this helps. Thank you.